Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. Uh, this episode I am having a look at the car behind me, the jolly old Toyota Prius. But before I get in and drive, I just want to explain a few things. My dream and ambition with Fully Charged is to create a series that looks very seriously at the changes that might be brought about by the introduction of electric and hybrid electric vehicles. This is, of course, a crazy dream. I mean, unlike my other online series, Carpool, which has been a great success and I'm very proud of it, this is a really complicated show to make. You are looking at a man who failed his maths GCSE, a man whose grasp of science, and particularly electricity, and the terms used to describe its wondrous ways, is very, very limited. I'm just about intelligent enough to work out the basics. That's all I can do. I'm struggling to secure funding for this series so I can hire people like proper, clever, well-educated, intelligent people who can supply me with facts and figures and clever graphical explanations. However, until then, I'm just gonna try and cover the basics. Just deliver the simple facts. And here's one interesting fact. The car behind me uses much less petrol than any other fossil fuel powered car I've ever driven. And here's the reason. Rechargeable batteries. Under the hood, it's the same as the third generation Prius in every respect. It's a parallel hybrid. Petrol engine, generator and electric motor, all strapped together and slung in here. But this, I firmly believe, is the next step. And it starts exactly the same and it drives exactly the same. You don't have to do anything. There's no, there are, there's less buttons in this one than there are in the standard one. This is the plug-in hybrid and it's the first time I've driven it and it's quite an interesting car. I haven't driven a car that uses petrol to go along a road that can travel this far on this little petrol, 96.5 miles to the gallon. That is, that is very impressive. I've got, I've got a certain amount of scepticism, I suppose, if I'm really honest, about the point of putting in a rechargeable battery with the range that this one has. If you just drive on electric vehicle mode, this car has a range of about 14 miles. And you can just, I can hear immediately the sneers of the oil lobby immediately. 14 miles, that's not going to be much use. You know, I mean, obviously you can drive hundreds of miles because you just put petrol in it as well, but you know, it only has an EV range of 40 miles. And you go, well, that's, seems a bit pointless. You know, when I first heard about it, someone said, yeah, it has, it'll have a range of about 40 miles. And I thought they said 40, 40 miles electric range makes sense because you could do an enormous amount of journeys without using any petrol at all with a 40 mile range. But 14, I'm thinking to myself, what's the point? According to the gauges, now obviously they're not absolutely accurate, but according to the gauges, I'm doing 99.9 .9 miles to the gallon. It doesn't go up any higher than that, it doesn't go to 100 miles to the gallon, the gate, so you can't tell. Uh, so I don't really know what to make of that. Um, because clearly I can hear that like now the petrol engine is running, so it is using some fuel. Ah, but now it isn't. Wow, that is amazing. So I'm accelerating and I can hear the petrol engine going. Then it suddenly switched off. I'm now doing 55, 50, well, I'm doing 60 miles an hour. And it's still in electric vehicle mode. I mean, I'm sort of, I'm sort of half <laughs> wanting it to go down a bit because it's quite boring, you know, because I, I was going to drive the car today and report on how many miles to the gallon it does. Well, you know, it's still on 99.9. .9. So they've updated the software that runs it to a certain amount and it's got a little EV with a plug-in symbol. Uh, there, which is now now it's on electric vehicle again. See, I, there's no button to press. You could override it in the uh, in the original one. There was a button there. There's no button, so you can't choose whether to go on EV or petrol. It just knows when it can. Uh, it is that slightly alarming thing of driving a vehicle that's slightly more intelligent than you are. But it's almost like you know being inside Stephen Fry. <laughs> you know it's very clever, and you're just hoping to be nice to you. you know, that's really awful. I don't know if that's a very good analogy, but you know. So then, the argument then would be, obviously, from the pro-oil lobby, oh, well, it doesn't make any difference because the electricity that uh, you plug it in with is coming from coal and it's just as dirty as a diesel truck with no exhaust. You know, that tired, it is a very tired old argument, and my response to it is very tired and old, but I will say it again. 
and that is that the electricity that's used to make petrol far outweighs anything that a, a battery car will ever do. And what's interesting about this car, and I think the new breed of cars that are coming out, the serial hybrids and the parallel hybrids. A serial hybrid is things like the GM Volt and the Ampera, same car basically, which has a little petrol motor somewhere in the vehicle that generates electricity for the batteries to increase your range. And they don't, the uh, petrol engine never drives the wheels. Uh, it, it, the only thing that makes you move along is an electric motor. So those ones just give a hugely extended range to an electric vehicle. And I can see those catching on big time in the next five years. Now, look, I'll stop still. Ah, I can, it's very hard to tell when the uh, uh, petrol engine's running in this car. You hear that? How can you hear that? That is just electricity. That is just coal being burnt and polluting the atmosphere to allow me to drive smugly in my holier-than-thou plug-in Prius. Still on electric mode. 47, 48, 49, 50, still on electric mode. Can't go any faster because the car in front is not going any faster. Still at 99.9 .9 miles to the gallon. I have been asking myself very seriously why I got interested in electric vehicles. I've done a lot of public speaking about them in the last few weeks. This is what is classified as disruptive technology. Uh, even this car, which is made by a big motor manufacturer, but it uses um, new and disruptive technology, it upsets the status quo and it upsets people. I mean, people get genuinely upset by it. They're threatened by it, they find it challenging to their worldview, which they can't sit in very comfortably. It's a shame because all I did, the only step I took, was be open-minded about it and go, well, maybe it is better, I don't know. I just want to update on the mileage quickly now because I now know that the recharged battery section of the battery in this car has completely gone flat. It's got no pure electric miles from the part of the battery that you recharge. So there's the standard kind of hybrid area battery left. And the car is still reading, and I'm going to deliver this in a top gear styly. The car is still reading 99.9 .9 miles to the gallon. Uh, and as you can tell, I am travelling along a motorway and I'm doing the speed limit. I'm 70 miles an hour, so I've not driven. In, in any weird way. I mean, I've driven carefully, like I always do, uh, you know, but I haven't been sort of manic hypermiling. I haven't really got time. 83.7 miles to the gallon, I think that's not bad. I don't know what other cars can get that. Certainly none of this size or weight. Here's a very, very good argument for hybrid cars. Look where I am at the moment. I am stuck in a monster traffic jam on the M40 in Oxfordshire in England. I don't know why it's happened, who knows, it's maybe an accident or roadworks or something. And you probably can't hear at the moment, but I can tell you that the petrol engine in this car is not running. Um, I'm only doing six miles an hour and I've got to stop again. All the vehicles around me now, and there would be, what, 10, 15,000 of them possibly on this? This is a big traffic jam. Uh, all their engines are running constantly. Vum, 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 So you imagine the fuel use of this traffic jam. It's not going anywhere, it's not moving. It is probably tens of thousands of gallons an hour doing absolutely nothing. Now I'm sitting still now, nothing is going on. This car isn't using any energy at all. Now I'm starting to move again because the traffic is crawling along very slowly. I'm not using any fossil fuel, I'm using a tiny bit of electricity that has been regenerated by my movement and that's all. Well I drove the Prius over 300 miles altogether and my mileage at the end of that was just over 87 miles to the gallon. That's both uh, highway driving, rural road driving with hills and urban driving as you can see here. And I recharged it in the time I had it, I recharged it one, two, three, four times, five times including this time when I recharged it in a supermarket car park only for an hour. So that I think the more you can recharge it clearly the better it, it operates but all in all I'm pretty impressed with the plug-in Prius.